everyone, welcome back to All Things Jira, and I'm back with another weird story that I found on the internet. This part of the story starts December 1976 on the set of the ABC show The Six Million Dollar Man. This particular episode was being filmed in Long Beach, California at the Pike Amusement Park, specifically the Laugh in the Dark expedition. A set hand was moving mannequins around trying to get everything set up for the scene that they were about to do. He moved one particular mannequin and the arm snapped off. Now he, he was attempting to put the arm back on and he realized that this mannequin was made out of a meat-like substance and it looked like there was bone in it. He said that the mannequin looked like it was made out of beef jerky. Now the set hand said that the mannequin didn't look lifelike at all. He didn't look real. The skin was painted red. It was missing ears, toes, fingers, and hair. So he thought something was really odd about it. He went to ask a few people who kind of brushed him off. So he decided he was going to let it go. But when he got back to the body, there were other people there that thought that there was something odd about this mannequin too. So they contacted the authorities. Uh, the police came. They took the arm. They took the arm to the LA County coroner's office. The coroner took a look at it and determined that these were human remains. So they went back to the amusement park. They got the entire body. They brought it back to the LA County coroner's office so they could do further testing and try to figure out how this body got into an amusement park. So when the coroner got the whole body, he realized that there was a Y incision, that there was a Y incision made on the body. Now that's the incision they used during an autopsy. Inside the body, they realized that this person had been shot and that may have been his cause of death. The coroner also realized this body had been embalmed with an embalming fluid that contained arsenic and that hadn't been done that hadn't been used in decades so the outside of this body was completely mummified but the coroner noted that the organs on the inside were so well preserved it looked like he had died three or four days ago they looked into the mouth of this body now in his mouth they found a penny from 1924 and some ticket stubs now the ticket stubs were to the lewis sunny museum Lewis Sonny had a traveling show called the Museum of Crime. Detectives found out that Lewis Sonny had passed away, but he did have a son that was living named Dan. When they went to speak to Dan, Dan let them know that these mummified remains were owned by his father at some point. He had owned them for about 35 years. He received these mummified remains because he had loaned someone $500 and they used the remains as collateral. So when they couldn't pay him back, he he then owned these mummified remains. Dan also let them know that the rema remains were of a man named Elmer McCurdy. He said his father owned these mummified remains for about 35 years and they had been in a few movies that his father did. One movie was called Narcotic and the other was called She Freak and I believe both of those movies are on YouTube. His father had been in a business deal that went wrong. He lost some money and he eventually sold these remains. He sold these remains to a man named Spoonie Singh and that's how they ended up at the Pike Amusement Park. So who is Elmer McCurdy and how did he end up as mummified remains at an amusement park? Elmer McCurdy was born January 1st, 1980 in Maine. He was born to a 17 year old unwed mother and I could not find his mother's name at all. I couldn't find really any family members names. Now, because she was 17 and unwed, she convinced a couple to adopt Elmer. But instead of an adoption where she gave her child away, she actually moved in with the family and pretended to be Elmer's aunt. So they all lived together. No one ever knew that she was his mother. But when Elmer was about 13 or 14, the family decided to tell him. So they tell Elmer the secret that she's actually his mother and Elmer starts to rebel. He started to smoke and drink and get into doing petty crimes in the area he was so upset that he had been lied to for all these years he just he just started to rebel and was doing everything at some point elmer decided that he was going to straighten up his life and he moved out west to missouri now in missouri he became a miner and but for the most part he worked as a miner working as a miner he got some experience in explosives and then he eventually joined the army but he joined the army in louisiana so i'm not sure how he got from missouri or I'm not sure what happened that led him from Missouri to Louisiana, but he joined the army in Louisiana. In the army, he obtained more knowledge about bombs and about weapons as well. Now, this is back in the late 1800s, so there wasn't really a whole lot of information. At some point, he contracted tuberculosis. I'm not sure if that's why he was discharged from the army or if he got discharged afterward, or if he was discharged afterwards, but he was discharged from the army in 1910. So he and an army buddy of his that was also discharged decided that they were going to 
commit crimes for a living. Like that's how they were going to get their money. They were arrested for a few petty things and eventually they got together a whole group of guys and they just, they decided they were going to go around and rob banks and trains. That was going to be their thing. So initially they robbed a general store. So from the general store, they got some guns and they blew open a safe and got the money that was inside. Now with the things that they stole from the general store, they were able to commit more robberies. They went on to rob banks and trains. The most that I can find they got from these robberies was about $600. Now today, $600 isn't a lot to get from robbing a train or a bank, but at that time you could actually buy a house for somewhere around $500. So I guess they did okay, but there was about six or seven of them. So they had to divide all this money up. So there was information on a lot of the crimes that, that they committed. But if I was to go into detail about all of them, this video will be really long. If you do want to know about the crimes they committed, I can make another video specifying. I can make another video telling you about all the crimes that they did, but I, I won't do that in this one. They, they did commit several crimes. So they robbed quite a few banks. They robbed quite a few trains and a couple stores. On the last robbery they committed together, they robbed a train. Now in robbing this train, they got about $45, a watch, a pistol, and a couple bottles of whiskey. Because they had robbed so many trains and banks, people were looking for them. So they, there was actually a railroad detective that was out trying to find this group of men that, was, that robbed all these banks and trains. So after the robbery of that train, the detective was kind of getting, a, he was getting a lot closer to them. And the sheriff of that town that the train was robbed in also set out a search party to look for them. Well, they found Elmer held up in this ranch. <clears throat> so a shootout began. So each side just kept firing. Eventually the, uh, the sheriffs and the detectives stopped firing once they realized that no one on the inside was firing any longer. And they sent a teenage boy inside to see what, what was going on. I'm not sure why they sent a teenage boy inside, but so the teenager went inside and everything just says they, he found Elmer dead. I'm not sure what happened to the other guys, but they realized that Elmer was dead. So they took his body to the local undertaker. This undertaker was Joseph Johnson. He was an undertaker and he sold coffins. So he did an autopsy on the body. He embalmed the body and waited for someone to claim the body. Now, because Elmer had no family there in Oklahoma, there was no one there to claim the body. Therefore, the undertaker never got paid for his services. The sheriff's office refused to pay the undertaker for the work he had done to the body. So he held the body for a little bit longer and he decided since he wasn't going to get paid, he propped him up in the window. He propped Elmer's body up in the window as advertisement for his business. And that's crazy. How do you do that to a person? It's not Elmer's fault that nobody has claimed his body and that nobody's paid for his embalming, but that's what he did. His children actually played with Elmer's body. They would put roller skates on the body and roll it around and scare people. Elmer and his friends were were outlaws in the town. So people were all, all these people were curious about seeing Elmer's body. So they would come by and look at the body in the window. Eventually, Joseph Johnson began to charge admission for people to come in and take a look at Elmer's body. So he kind of set him up like an exhibit. So people would come in, look at Elmer's body, and they would put coins in his mouth. I'm not sure why they put coins in his mouth, but they will put coins in his mouth. Joseph also used his body as training for other undertakers. So he would embalm his body over and over again. It would later be found that Elmer's body contained five to six times the amount of arsenic that a normal body would have had at that time. Because Elmer's body was sitting out in the open in the air at Joseph's, um, at Joseph's business, that was when his body started to mummify. And then because he kept embalming him, the outside of his body was becoming mummified, but the inside was staying fresh, I guess you would say. That's gross. Over time, businessmen would come in and inquire about purchasing Elmer's body. They wanted to put him in carnivals and freak shows and all types of things. Now, Joseph always refused saying that he was um, expecting some family members to come claim him, but it seems like Joseph was just using him to make money. At some point, two men came to Joseph and said that they were Elmer's long lost brothers and that their mother was dying, that her dying wish to, was to have Elmer's body brought back to California so he could be buried with the family. So Joseph was a little skeptical about it at first, but he eventually released Elmer's body to these two men. Come to find out these two men were James and Charles Patterson of the Patterson Carnival Show. 
and they used Elmer's body to make money at their traveling carnival and they went all around the country. So James is the one that Louis Sonny eventually loaned the $500 to and he lost Elmer to Louis Sonny and that's how Elmer ended up at the at the amusement park. So now, fast forward back to 1976. The LA County Coroner has Elmer's mummified remains. They're not sure what to do with it. They know Elmer's name, but they don't really know the history behind Elmer. There was a group of men in Oklahoma that were historians about the outlaws of that time. They heard about the body that was in LA, and they figured out based on the time that the LA County Coroner thinks that this person died, and based on the injuries that this person had, they realized that it was Elmer McCurdy. They contacted the LA County Coroner and asked if they could have the body and put him in the cemetery there in Oklahoma. And they had a special section set up for the outlaws called the Boot Hill section. So the LA County Coroner agreed once they provided proof of who he was and the body, the remains were sent to Oklahoma. On April 22nd, 1977, there was a huge funeral for Elmer. About 300 people showed up. They were all dressed as cowboys. They were carrying guns and they were riding horses. And Elmer's casket was actually um, carried on a horse-drawn hearse. So they buried Elmer and they actually covered him with two feet of cement so no one would ever go back and dig Elmer up and exploit his body again. Alright guys, let me know what you think about the story. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share my channel. And come back again next Wednesday. Bye.